The fact that people still militantly believe that if you put a plane on a treadmill, it could stop it from taking off is a weird science fact that boggles my mind. There's an old internet question. When I say old, I mean like 15 years ago, this was circling the web. A and it's a hypothetical, right? The hypothetical is that if there's a plane, I think it's a 747 in most of the examples, is sitting on a conveyor belt that is as wide and long as a runway. And the conveyor belt is designed to move backwards at the same speed that the plane would be moving forward or the plane's wheel speed is moving forward. Question is, would the plane be able to take off? And spoiler alert, the answer is fucking yes. The plane would have absolutely no issue whatsoever taking off. So why am I here thinking about this Backstreet Boys era internet hypothetical, you may ask? And that's because it was just posted on threads the other day and the number of people who were commenting like, there's no way it could take off because a plane requires air moving over the wings to generate lift and so it would just sit there in one spot and not take off was fucking painful. And I made a comment about how painful it was and the number of comments I got in response that were ignorantly, confidently wrong was even more painful. And I tried explaining it to these people and they still couldn't get it. And I offered multiple citations and sources and they still didn't get it. And I just need to fucking rant about it in a science video. And I'm gonna do my own little example. Now at first glance, I'll give people the benefit of the doubt because you look at this problem and you think if I run on a treadmill, I stay in one place. If I were to ride a bike or drive a car on a treadmill, I would stay in one place. So to take that logic to the next step, it's easy to think, well, if a plane were to throttle up on a treadmill that was moving backwards at the same speed the plane was moving forward, like a runner or a bicycle or a car, it would probably stay in one place. And if the plane stays in one place, it can't move through the air to generate lift and can't take off. But then if you think about it for like more than three seconds, you should realize that of course the plane could take off because it is different than those other examples. If you're still not getting it, this is a car. Uh, one of those ones you can push back and it goes forward, you know, like that. So this is gonna be a car for the moment that it will be a plane in a little bit, but we'll get to that. And this car drives forward the same way that a real car drives forward. And that the wheels that are touching the ground Around, spin and push it along the road. So on a conveyor belt or a treadmill, like this example, which sort of works, it's hard because I can't moderate the uh, the speed of this. Uh, yeah, it would stay in one spot if it was moving at the same speed as the treadmill, and you can kind of see that here. Now we're gonna pretend that the Cadillac is a plane. The the, the toilet paper tube is gonna represent a jet engine, and then the doors are open, those are its wings. And you know these old Cadillacs were kind of built to look like jet planes, that's why they had the, the scoops on the side, and, and this one doesn't have the big tail fins, but it has tail fins. Now obviously the toilet paper roll isn't a functional jet engine, so I have to substitute that with this. But this leaf blower creates thrust. It's functionally the exact same thing as a jet engine, and that thrust just pushes air against itself and pushes the plane forward. Now, obviously, if the toilet paper roll were the jet engine, it would be pushing backwards, like, you know, if if this was strapped onto, onto the this like that, you know, and it'd push it along, but you get the point, I, I hope. And the point is, is that when the thrust is pushing against the air, there's no connection between this surface and what is moving this forward. Hi, you're making, you're making it hard to do science right now, miss. So in that case, these wheels are doing nothing but spinning. They're just supporting the weight of the plane as it moves along the ground until it gets fast enough to take off. But they are doing nothing more than that. And so if the ground underneath them is spinning backwards, that just means that the plane's gonna move forward at the same speed and the wheels will just be spinning twice as fast. So for this demonstration, because I'm not gonna rig up a leaf blower, my hand is the thrust. It's pushing it along up here rather than the wheels moving it along the ground, right? So here you can see that despite the treadmill going backwards, I can push this forward as fast as I want along the treadmill because the wheels are just free spinning underneath it, which is the exact same thing that would happen if a propeller or a jet engine was providing thrust pushing against the air to push it forward over the treadmill. It would make no difference. Granted, there'd be slightly more rolling resistance and friction on the tires and wheel bearings than on a static runway, but not enough to have any measurable difference. So the people who are still desperately trying to not be wrong on this try to like pick apart the wording of the question. Which granted, it's worded poorly, but still makes no difference. They're like, oh, it would never work because if the treadmill is designed as it says to match the speed of the wheels, it could only possibly do that if the plane is stationary. It's impossible for the plane to take off because if the plane is moving forward, the wheel speed would always be faster than the treadmill. And yeah, that, that's true, except the plane doesn't give a shit what the treadmill is designed to do because the plane is designed to use thrust to push against the air to move forward. So the treadmill would just be doing what it's designed to do and accelerate indefinitely until the plane took off and the plane plane still wouldn't give a shit and would take off. People are like, oh no, it couldn't do it because, you know, like the wheel bearings would be going too fast and they, they'd melt down and the tires would explode and like, 
probably know, honestly, they wouldn't. These are these are designed to hold up to incredibly high speeds and stresses and heat. But also, that's not what the question's about, and, and you know it. The question is simply, would a treadmill moving backwards keep a plane that's throttling up in place? And the answer is no. A plane would accelerate and take off exactly the same as it would on a static runway as it would on a conveyor belt moving backwards at any speed. I even had one guy's like, you're misinterpreting the question. It's to see if we could use a short conveyor belt to make a, a short runway so planes could take off in a short period of time. And no, that's not right either because it literally specifically states that the conveyor belt is as wide and long as a runway. So like there's no situation, no matter how you interpret the stupid problem, where the plane does not take off. And don't take my word for it. Mythbusters did a whole episode on it. But of course there was people that are like, oh, they didn't do the experiment right because you know, they're smarter than the Mythbusters. So now how about this? These people are some fancy engineers and they use some fancy computer program I don't understand to put through pretty much every scenario possible to see what would happen. And the results are that no matter how you interpret the question or the data or the scenario, the plane always takes the fuck off. And the fact that people still perceive that an air park sized Peloton has a potential to prevent a plane from pulling off the pavement? Well, that is pretty mind boggling.